Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us this evening for our high school academic exploration webinar. My name is David Dwyer, and I serve as our Director of Admissions and Marketing here at Faith Lutheran. I'm going to give everybody a couple seconds here to get in and get settled before we get going with the content of this. Um, but just so everybody is aware, we are recording this webinar. So short of somebody sneezing uncontrollably or burping during the presentation, we do intend to put this online so you guys can view this later. So please feel free to ask questions as we go. We'll give everybody a, a few more seconds here and then we'll officially launch. Thank you for joining us. All right, it looks like most have joined already. We'll have a few more trickling in throughout this evening. So again, my name is David Dwyer. I serve as Director of Admissions here at Faith Lutheran Middle School and High School. We're excited to be able to talk to you all this evening about high school academics and all that we have to offer at Faith Lutheran. We have a, a fair mix of current students as well as prospective families joining us this evening. So we're going to cover content from a couple different angles here, uh, but this is all for you to make sure you feel prepared, make sure you feel excited uh, and ready for whatever high school may bring you. So we'll have families uh, that are, are current eighth grade families as well as current ninth and 10th grade families throughout. So please, if you've made it here, if you've made it this far, feel free to stick around, join us. We'll have a short Q&A at the end of the presentation. I want to briefly introduce everybody that we have joining us as a panel today before we get kicked off with our high school principal. So joining us on this presentation, we have Ms. Emily Blank, our Director of Academies, as well as a science teacher here at Faith Lutheran. We have Ms. Anna Orr, our Director of Faith Lutheran Online. We have William Maniago, who is one of our Class of 2023 students, a senior this year. Uh, excited for him to be joining us, as well as Stella Russo, a junior this year out of the Class of 2024. To officially kick us off, I'm pleased to introduce Ms. Kat Stokes, our high school principal, who would like to share a, a brief word with us before we get started. Thank you. Hi, good evening. Um, I am Mrs. Stokes. I'm the high school principal here at Faith. Um, and I just wanted to start off with uh, Faith Lutheran is committed um, to being the standard of Christian education. And one of the ways we practice this is through our academics. Uh, Faith Lutheran strives to offer rigorous, rigorous college preparatory education to all of our students. But on top of that vision, we have our mission statement, which is everyone is prepared and everyone is saved. This means our academic standards are not, on, not only need to be rigorous, but they need to be able to be offered and supported to all students um, to succeed in that type of environment. Um, I do wanna especially thank all our panelists tonight, especially our students who are gonna offer their insights to exactly what they did in the academies. Um, and with that, can you join me in a quick prayer? Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us here tonight. Um, please bless our time together as we learn more about the academies and the academics offered at Faith Lutheran. Um, I ask that you bless everyone, um, keep them safe and healthy and prepared for the Friday with the push of the end of the week. I ask this all in your holy, precious name. Amen. All right. And with that, I'd like to turn things over to Miss Emily Blank, who will go ahead and get started with the bulk of our programming this evening. Emily, take it away. You are muted, Emily. Thanks so much. I had my mouse ready and then I forgot. Um, thanks for joining us, everybody. I'm really excited that we don't do this Zoom thing very often anymore, and we're excited to talk to you about all of our high school academics tonight and get into some details and answer any questions you have. We want to give you an overview on how we um, give students a lot of tools to um, build resumes and find what fits best for them. So I'm going to share my presentation with you, and we will go through a few things before we hear from our students. Okay, so as Ms. Stokes says, we like to prepare our students for college and that means the best fit college for everybody. And with that, we are constantly researching what, um, what does it take to get our students into those schools that they would like to get into. For some students, that's a highly selective school. For other students, it's any school anywhere in the world um, with any kind of degree that they're looking for. Um, and you have to know that these schools are looking at a lot of candidates, what we do know as we research it is that there are people 
choosing our students to get into schools and people make these decisions. And so we want to help our students stand out because, you know, UCLA will get over 150,000 applicants. So if you have a 4.0 and a 32 on your ACT, you're going to look like a lot of the other of the 150,000 applicants. So how can you stand out when you're applying to these schools? And we design our um, our academics at our school around those things to help our students. So here at Faith Lutheran, the first thing we wanna talk about is some of our coursework. We wanna talk about um, dual credit opportunities and we wanna talk about our flexible scheduling like with our online school. We wanna talk about our academies and all of these opportunities that our students have. So the first way we help our students stand out is of course with our challenging and active coursework. We have over 190 courses and we have 36 of them honors courses, 22 AP courses, and we provide ACT and SAT preparation. We have lots of opportunities for extracurricular and service, um, getting community service hours at different places. And of course, our counselors are always working with our students and parents and guiding them to the best fit college that they're interested in. So the first thing that we want to talk about is college credit and how can you get college credit in the exact same high school courses that you're taking here at Faith Lutheran. So the first way is through um, our dual credit courses that are on ground classes. So we have a number of classes here at Faith Lutheran that you take the class here and you can simultaneously receive uh, college credit for it through Concordia University, Nebraska. The high school course that you take, the grade you receive in that high school course is the college course grade you receive that will be on a transcript you get from Concordia University, Nebraska. So it's a it's a credit that you then transfer into your college of your choice. When you go there, you do not have to go or attend Concordia, Nebraska um, to get that credit. So you take it through us and it's an accredited program that you get that transfer credit. It is about $85 per credit hour. And that is an amazing thing about it. Um, so if you go to UNLV, you know, it's over $300 a credit hour right now. And so this is $85 a credit hour. Many of the classes are three credit hours. So um, that is pretty standard with college credit. So you'd take 85 times three, and that's how much that college class is costing you, which is a lot cheaper than your other schools. So we also have advanced placement courses. I mentioned that we have 22 of them. And in, in an advanced placement course, you can also earn college credit. They're AP for short. And so you'll see if it says, you know, AP World History, you can earn dual credit through that AP World History class. And you see that the credit you earn, the college credit, depends on the AP test score and the acceptance score at the college you attend. So an AP test is scored on a scale of one through five. And there are some schools that will accept a three or higher to get dual credit, to get the college credit for that class. Um, there are some schools that will be more highly selective and only accept fours or fives. And those courses cost $100 for the test. So there's two different ways. And, you know, let's take, for example, you know, AP chemistry. You can take AP chemistry for as a dual credit on ground class where you get it as a transfer credit, or you can rely on your AP test score to get the dual credit that way. There are some students that we've had go here that actually take advantage of the credit both ways, where they'll test out of a class using the AP score that they received, but then they'll also use the credit as an elective credit. And so the same course they took here in high school, they will get to knock out six credit hours on in college. So there's some different ways you can um, manipulate and use that and advocate for that when you go to college. And our counselors are great at helping you decide, should I take this class for college credit or should I not? So later on, when I show you the our website, you'll be able to see which courses are offered for dual credit and which courses are offered for AP, for AP credit there. I also want to talk about our new Faith Lutheran Online School. This is a way that you can have a flexible schedule. Um, for example, I have a student in our STEM Academy who she jumps horses and her practice starts at 1.30. And so she gets out of school earlier every day because she's taking classes online. 
And this allows her to get to her practice. And so it just allows students, whether they're doing it for an extracurricular activity or for some other scheduling reason, um, it allows them to take classes online. Maybe they prefer taking classes online. So we have some different ways that students can take part in our online classes. Our on-ground students can take one up, you know, one to two of their eight courses as an online course. So a normal student's schedule is eight classes, and they can um, opt to take one or two of them. So those students would be able to take a study hall here on campus if it's in the middle of the day where they can sit and they can work on their course during that time. Um, then we also have, um, we have other, you know, we have a program where our students can be completely online and, you know, the students could just be the hybrid there. So it's important that um, that parents know, though, that if you plan on taking more than eight courses, so if you're taking a full load of eight on ground courses and you additionally take an online class, that there is a tuition increase. So if you're going to have more than eight courses, that's when the tuition increase would kick in. We also want to make sure you know that um, you need to take both semesters of the course back to back. And I have a picture um, that Mrs. Orr wanted me to show here in a second to make sure you understand that. So each semester, just like in an on-ground class, you can take half of a class in the online class. Um, so summers, we don't offer on-ground classes during the summer, only online classes, but students could chip away at their classes by taking a semester during the summer. So summer sessions only offer one semester of a course um, for that would be at an additional cost. And so when I go to the website, you'll be able to see which courses are Faith Lutheran online courses. And students, if you're looking into this, when you do your course request starting in December, if you're interested in taking an online class, you want to look for the FLO um, in the name of the course. And that indicates that that's an online course for you. So that's what it would look like when you sign up for it. So here's what we mean about making sure that you take the first and second semesters of an online class back to back. So you have the option here of taking, for example, Spanish one, and the A stands for the first semester and the B stands for the second semester. So you could start this year taking Spanish one in the spring, and then you could take the second semester of that course over the summer, and then you would have completed the course. Or, for example, you could take the first semester of ecology in the summer, and then you could finish it up in the fall. And of course, you could do like a traditional student. If you wanted to start first semester of an online course in a fall and then take the second semester in the spring, you can do that, of course, as well. But it's just really important. We want to emphasize that you take the first and second semesters back to back whenever you do it. Having a gap is not good educationally. So we want to make sure that they go back to back, however that works with your schedule. And Mrs. Orr is online with us tonight. So um, if you have questions about Faith Lutheran Online, please don't hesitate to ask and we'll get that information to you. Right now, I want to give you a brief overdue, overview to our endorsement programs because this is another way we help our students stand out. Our endorsement programs offer students a way to explore and figure out their passions. Um, the crux of our endorsement programs, they um, not only have courses, of course, a broad variety of courses with all of our academies, but they also offer students a way to compete locally and nationally. They also offer students the opportunity to do internships, um, and we'll talk about the meaningfulness of that and um, connecting with mentors. Um, and so with these endorsement programs, our students get a lot of different things that they can put on their resumes, and we also actually put them on their transcripts. So we have a Christ Academy, and our Christ Academy is for students who are interested in full-time church work, whether that be as a pastor or a teacher or a counselor. There's a lot of different things incorporated in that, and we want to encourage our students to consider serving others full-time that way. Uh, we also have, I'm going to go across here to our Business and Entrepreneurship Academy, and for students that are interested in that, we have opportunities for them to do internships. We have our STEM Academy with six different endorsements, so um, you could specialize in computer science, you could specialize in environmental science, engineering, biomedicine, um, if they're interested in research. And we have a general STEM endorsement. Um, if you know you love math and science, but aren't quite sure of which area, that's a great one for you. Our faith conservatory has majors in the visual arts, in 
musical theater, in tech theater. Hope I get them all. Willem, you might have to help me here. Okay, so um, visual arts, musical theater, tech theater, dance, and vocal instrumental, and instrumental visual. music. Yes. Did I get them? I think so. I think I got them. <laughs> Then we have our flight academy and our flight academy is our newest academy and we offer endorsements for students who want to fly as well as if students are interested in flying drones so they can become certified with the FAA both ways. We have our justice and advocacy academy and for students who are interested in whether it's politics or becoming an attorney or going into criminal justice, there are three different endorsements there. We have our hospitality and tourism academy and we'll hear more from Stella about that. Then we have our film and broadcasting academy with those two endorsements and we have our honors institute and i'll point out some things about our honors institute we usually get quite a few questions on this night about that so our honors institute is our honors program for students that helps um, students it provides a lot of opportunities for our students that are looking to get into highly selective schools so with act and sat prep help with their honors project um, those types of things. And so I'll show you on our website where more information is about that. So then we have, um, I just want to pop up here so you can see an, a sample transcript where on it, we include the students specific endorsements that they get. We also include any resume hours on the transcript so that the colleges for sure see um, not just the courses our students are taking, but that they're passionate in, so, in different areas, um, and that can help them stand out. So that's our overview of the academies. I'll go into some more detail and answer some more questions later. But the next thing I want to do is I want to introduce Willem. Willem is um, a senior this year. Can you believe it? So um, Willem is going to talk about his experiences with our different programs here at Faith, and we always love to hear from him. So Willem, I'm going to let you take it away. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Willem Minyago, and like Mrs. Blank said, I'm a senior here at Faith. I am a theater performance major in the conservatory. Uh, I serve as president of our Revelation Show Choir, and I'm a member of our Chamber Singers Choir and the International Thespian Society. I'm also a member of the STEM Academy, and I'm pursuing a general sciences endorsement, as well as being a member of the Honors Institute, DECA, and our chapter of the National Honor Society. Finally, I'm one of the captains of the varsity swim team and a school record holder. My decision to apply to the conservatory and STEM Academy came from a building interest in theater and science in middle school. I had done some summer programs in science and done well in my science classes. This helped show me that I wanted to be more committed and more involved in high school. And I was interested in deepening and in expanding my experience. My favorite aspect of being in both academies is being around other engaged and driven students who are interested in the same things as me. Specific to the STEM Academy, the required internship has stood out as a highlight of my high school experience. And I'm sure Mrs. Blank is gonna talk a little bit about this more, but in the STEM Academy, we are required to do a 90 hour internship with a company, organization or university of our choice. And this gives students real world experience uh, in the field and teaches us how to communicate professionally. So I'm gonna give you a quick overview into my project before I continue. Um, so my family has been going to South Carolina for over 20 years. It's become a very special place to me um, and my family. And I have fallen in love with the culture, the beaches and the food of the area. Uh, I had also done several trips throughout middle school that had an emphasis on coastal ecology. And the summer before my sophomore year, the opportunity arose to work under several professors and scientists from Clemson University who are studying coastal ecology. So my project um, in specific is focused on abating the effects of sea level rise. Um, so the effects of salt water entering ecosystems that are not meant for high salinity levels. And we are assessing the effectiveness of a new water control structure and helping to restore freshwater ecosystems and communities. So for the past three summers, I have traveled to South Carolina to measure tree diameters in the field with my mentors. You'll find me collecting data waist deep in the swamps and collecting dozens of mosquito bites along the way. Uh, after my field work during the summer, the work continues at home and I meet with my mentor over Zoom several times a month and I work on data entry and analysis. 
And one of the major achievements in this project was when I developed a professional scientific poster, which I've since presented at a local research symposium, as well as at a graduate level research forum in South Carolina. This included winning an award for research and progress and being featured in a local newspaper. But the project's not complete. Um, with more time and data, the research will be complete for publishing with my name cited as a co-author. This is important in catalyzing the next phases of our research, which hopefully includes subsidizing this new water control structure through public policy efforts. So my project has become longitudinal. Uh, in other words, that's an internship that lasts for multiple years. It's also an interdisciplinary one, merging the disciplines of biology, coastal ecology, public policy, and even public health. In summary, I'm passionate about this work, and in many ways, it's shown me some possible career interests. Additionally, this internship has set me apart in the college admissions process, and I'm finding that college admissions officers are impressed with the magnitude and depth of this work as a high school student. So back to the academies. Um, one difficulty of being in an academy or multiple academies is juggling schedules and the time management that goes with that. An academy is a major time commitment and it requires more and harder classwork. So that's why I'd recommend only doing it if you really like it. However, to counter that, one of the best things about the academy is the advising. So your advisors help you with a roadmap of high school classes at the beginning of high school and throughout. And there have been many occasions where Mrs. Blank and I or Mr. Chillman and I have sat down to organize my course plan. They help me think ahead and manage my competing responsibilities. In terms of future plans, I am right now in the midst of a pretty rigorous college admission process. I'm considering schools across the country with strong liberal arts curriculums, STEM research and study abroad programs, performance opportunities, and swimming. And right now I'm leaning in the direction of an interdisciplinary major in environmental science, biology, and public policy with the intention of getting the necessary prerequisites that I would need for medical school if I were to choose that route. The benefits of the academies are that they really help to shape one's commitment and passion. They help give students real world experience now and put us into semi-professional and professional environments that give us good life experience that is applied beyond high school. And I always like to close with saying that I have followed my interests through the academies, but that that doesn't necessarily mean that I wanna be a coastal ecologist or a Broadway star. I really believe that we don't need to know our careers now. And when I was applying for the academies, I felt nervous, feeling like that I was declaring that I wanted to be a theater major in college or a lab scientist, and that's not what it means. Um, I've really found that high school and college are about exploring and discovering, and that's what these programs do. They're here to provide deeper exploration, inquiry, and discovery. Thank you. Thanks, Willem. Um, I really like your last statement. I, I think it's important for parents and students to hear that we have amazing students like you and Stella here that balance a lot of different activities. And it's great because we can pull two students where they can hear about a lot of different things at once, but we always help our students balance things, right? And so um, so while, while students can do all the things that you and Stella do, they don't have to, right? You can still have a real high school experience, just take advantage of a couple of different things. And, and so we want our students' parents to know that we will never, never like, we're not trying to make all of the kids at Faith Lutheran, you know, do everything that you guys do, but it's, there are all of these opportunities. So um, it's really great that our students can do all of the things that you guys do. So if any of you out there have questions for Willem, please feel free to put them in the chat and we'll get them answered. We're going to um, we're going to go to Stella now. Stella gives you a different perspective. She's involved in different things and I'm really excited to hear from her. So Stella, go ahead. Thank you, Mrs. Blank. Hello, everyone. My name is Stella Russo, and I'm currently a junior. I'm from Nashville, Tennessee, and I started attending Faith my seventh grade year. I absolutely love Faith. This school offers so many opportunities. For example, I'm currently involved in Model United Nations, which I'm actually in a, in a practice right now. It is a student-led club where I'm secretary on staff. I've been a part of this club since my eighth grade year. In Model UN, students act as delegates representing countries, debating and discussing world policies with people all over the world. We go on two trips a year. Last weekend, we participated participated in Bruin Mun at UCLA, and we are currently in the process of organizing an international trip. 
I was one of the only middle schoolers on a high school team. It was extremely intimidating at first, but at every meeting I was welcomed with a smile and treated with respect. I'm also part of DECA, a business club that offers simulations of life like meetings and challenges. I started this my freshman year. Every year we participate in state. Uh, it is held on the strip for about three years. And if you win state, you are offered a place in internationals held in Orlando, Florida this year. There are about five clusters and among those I'm co-vice president of hospitality. Now, speaking about hospitality, I'm also enrolled in the Hospitality and Tourism Academy. One of our newest acad academies focusing on customer service and real life experiences. Our hospitality classes, which is a required course for the academy, were given tasks to set up food and help with tennis tournaments tomorrow. Both classes had to discuss together what foods, drinks, and how much they would cost and more helping in every way we could. I want to go in the tourism industry, becoming a museum director and curator, and this academy helps me see what challenges I might face in running a business. If you are enrolled in this academy, you must complete a 100 hour internship during which students are able to get certifications and more, which I think is pretty cool. Everything has come to me at random times in my life and it all seemed to fit. And I've stuck with most everything I do. The most challenging part of this is keeping up with everything. I'm enrolled in nine classes, one being online and extracurricular activities like marching band and varsity lacrosse. And everything again can be challenging. So keeping up with everything is uh, straight and organized is crucial for success, which I think is something Faith does really well. However, it seems to be working out and everyone is so welcoming. Also, when I was in fourth grade, I was tested for academic support. Since then, I was able to test in my public school libraries outside of my classroom and other places around the school. However, I never had a place where I could fully concentrate without any distractions. Usually people would be walking back and forth, class doors would be opening, and I would be able to hear all the conversations going on. The, ac the Academic Center at Faith allows me to have an opportunity to not be distracted and focus solely on my tests or quizzes, helping me receive the best grades I can possibly get. I'm also enrolled in the resource class. This is much like a study hall, however, it is only for students who need that academic support. All of the amazing teachers make sure that everyone is on top of their grades, assignments, and helps with anything we ask, whether that's math problems, helping us with essays, or her life in general. College is coming up for me, and I'm looking at universities in Europe, and research, the resource staff makes sure that all of my questions are answered, helps me navigate the unique admissions process, and communicates with those universities abroad in order, in order to find the right college for me and others. This class is usually really small, and it allows more of a personal relationship with the teachers, and this extra help allows me and others to focus on other school activities. This is a very helpful class, and I'm so thankful Faith sees the importance of the academic support. Thank you. Thanks, Stella. I love your unique view on everything and hearing how resource is able to support you. Um, yeah, if you guys have any questions for Stella as well, feel free to um, let us know and we'd be happy to have either Willem or Stella answer questions that you might wanna direct towards a student. We do have a question out there from Michelle and I thought I would, this is a really great question. And so I thought I would address it before I move on to our academies more in depth. Um, uh, the question from Michelle says, many states and private colleges are no longer requiring ACT and SAT scores for acceptance. What is Faith Lutheran doing to transition to support college preparation for this situation? So our college counselors are amazing and they're always abreast of all of these situations. Um, one of the things that we do though, are all of these things that we're talking about tonight, especially our endorsement programs that can help our students stand out in different ways on their transcripts, on their essays, on their resumes, to give them all of these opportunities to really let the schools know about our students. So we want our students, um, you know, they, their college admissions counselors are only able to give so much time to every applicant. And so we really want to make our students pop out. Um, and then, um, sorry, another question is popping up here for me. Okay. But then I also wanted to um, talk to you besides these endorsement programs, we run a college boot camp in August, and this is fantastic. Um, Willem, I don't know. Did you go to the college boot camp? I did go to the first college boot camp this summer. Yes. Yes. So at the college boot camp, they really help students get a handle on um, getting their applications set, writing their essays. They have people go through their essays. And so it really gets, gives the kids a kickstart and really um, 
really helps them with all of those things outside of the test scores. So um, we really want to beef those things up and support our students outside of the test scores as well for those schools that they're applying to that um, are doing test blind and those kinds of situations. So, oh, Sriya is on there. Hi, Sriya. I see Sriya has a question. And this is for Willem. So it says, being in two academies, we know you have to juggle classes to meet requirements of both. Willem, did you have to give up some classes that you might have wanted to take in order to fit in all the requirements? So why don't you ask, uh, you can answer that part of the question first. There's more. Okay, that's a great question. Um, and yes, yeah, so both class, um, both academies have very full requirements in terms of coursework. And um, there were definitely times where um, classes were double like blocked at the same time, so I couldn't take them at the same time. For example, the AP environmental science class is blocked at the same time as my honors musical theater class. And um, since musical theater is a requirement of the conservatory, I chose to stay in the musical theater class. Um, but I had a really great conversation with Mrs. Blank where we worked out a plan to make sure I would get all of my STEM requirements and that included um, taking an AP biology class instead. And um, I was able to go on the Boundary Waters ecology trip, which actually counted towards one of my um, STEM requirements. And so um, it's very flexible. And I think that the, the mentorship is, is truly one of the strengths of the academies in terms of balancing coursework. Um, the second part of the question is, did you have to do things over the summer or breaks more than other kids in order to fit in the requirements of both? Sure. So um, a great example is we have a computer science requirement here, and I ended up taking a computer science uh, elective that was a, a shorter summer course uh, online. And so, yes, I had to do some classes outside, but it was never overwhelming or um, um, it never got in the way of the rest of my academics. Awesome. Thanks, Willem. Hey, Willem, I'm going to shop around the Boundary Waters trip again this summer. So more fun with mosquitoes, but it's a great time. And I'm very excited. Mrs. Cheney and I are hoping to do an all girls trip, like an all girls group and the Boundary Water with it. So we think that'll be really exciting. We're getting a number of questions about the academy. So I'm going to shift over to... Um, I'm going to shift over and share my screen with you and go back into the presentation so I can answer those questions. All right, let's find where we're at here. Okay, so with the academies, um, it's important to recognize that the academies are kind of like what our charter and magnet schools offer, um, but these are within our own school. So it's kind of like a school within a school. We have currently 344 students in our um, academy programs. And so out of 1200 students total, you see that you don't have to be a part of these, um, but you are welcome to. And we'll go through all of the details about how do you apply? How do you find um, what classes you would need for them ahead of time? Um, can you drop them? That kind of a thing. So the first thing I want to go through is um, the structure that they offer. So I have mentioned at the beginning of the webinar um, that the courses are fundamental. You don't have to be in an academy to take advantage of the academy courses, though. The second component you see here are some of the com competitions that our students are in. So up in the top left corner, you see our students, our biomedical students competing at Berkeley in the bioengineering competition. You see our VEX robotics for our engineering students, our film and broadcasting students all participate. They go to competitions and enter their work in film festivals. They do 24-hour film festivals. They um, enter their uh, broadcasting written and performed work. And then we have a um, picture of mock trial. Of course, Stella talked about Model UN as well, and DECA, our business competition. So our students are always competing. Um, and really, it's it also provides a great social environment. That's one of the things that our students um, kind of unknowingly is what I hear at the end when they're graduating is they love that the academies provide not only these things, but provide them with a great friend group of like-minded students. So that's also something to keep in mind if you're if you're looking for that social side of high school to develop the good friend group um, that's similar to you. Here we have some pictures of our conservatory students and the, comp the things that they do to perform and they all compete as well. Um, our, our 
conservatory kids just got back from New York and their master act classes there. Here we have another component of our academies, and that is the internships they do. So we have students that um, we have relationships with many organizations, probably, you know, I don't know, about 70 organizations in the Valley where our students can complete their internships. And you can see it might be at studios, it might be in labs, um, it might be um, shadowing a judge, um, it might be getting their flight certifications. So these great opportunities for the students that are a part of it that they wouldn't normally get. The benefits, like I mentioned, the social side of it, in addition to the robust transcript, um, our students also get um, those those internships hours put on their transcripts, but I want to talk about a couple of students in particular to let you see that the other benefits are that are there, like the mentorship even outside of teachers. So besides supporting students with their courses, um, this is Andrew, and Andrew did his internship um, with a professor at UNLV, and this is Dr. Brendan Morris, and they um, just really enjoyed working together and Andrew worked with his graduate students and loved his work so much that Dr. Morris um, supported him and helped show him what kind of program to go to. So he ended up following in Dr. Morris's footsteps in the um, electrical engineering program at UC Berkeley. And then he graduated and he's actually back in town working. And so he, during his undergrad at UC Berkeley, he actually came back and worked with Dr. Morris in the summers and actually presented with him on projects nationally. And so that's a great example of how the mentorships can continue. This is Kira Wolfenberger, and she was one of our business students who completed her internship with CoinCloud here in town. And she's been working for CoinCloud for the last few years, um, continued on past Asked her internship and she's up at the University of Washington now and Kira just reached out to our own business students um, encouraging them to apply for positions with Coin Cloud for their internships because she was telling them what a great time she had. This is Zach and Zach did his engineering internship with JBA um, which was an engineering firm that um, has, is now NV5 and there were some engineers that um, made their own firm and they had worked with Zach when he was doing his high school internship. And when they formed their own firm, they actually contacted him when he was at college and asked him if he would continue um, on with them doing some work for them. And so Zach's been doing work from a distance while he's at college for them. And then they are ready to take him on when he's done with college. So that networking, the opportunity for jobs and continued support and relationship with people that are in the fields is invaluable to our students. Um, I want to go through our frequently asked questions. This will answer a number of questions that are popping up in the chat right now. So uh, conservatory auditions happen in January for the year before you want to join the want to join the conservatory. For example, if you are a current eighth grader and you are looking to join our conservatory, you would need to audition this coming January. So in just a couple of months for one of the different areas of the conservatory. And you can find out the audition dates um, and information like for the visual arts portfolios from Dr. Slater. Her email is on the screen. You could also go to the website and find that information there. But so it's important to realize that for conservatory students, you audition in the January prior to the year you want to be in the conservatory. If you're interested in joining an academy, um, you don't join ahead of time. So you apply in January of your ninth or 10th grade year. The reason why it's like that is because um, because these are based on courses and GPAs, we need to have a handle on how our students are doing in those specialized courses before they're applying. And so we have to wait for the grades to come in. And so the grades are done right at the end of Christmas. And so once we have those first semester transcripts, we're able to use that in the application process. So there was a question out there. So what do you do if you have to sign up for classes prior to prior to joining an academy and you're looking to meet more requirements for it? That's a great question. So in order to do that, um, please know that you can, you can sign up for what you think would work. Um, our requirements are um, public knowledge. So if you want to know some specific requirements, you can email me, Emily Blank. My email is at the bottom of the screen there. Um, and I can let you know what those are. Also, um, our counselors are able to change 
schedules during the spring due to um, joining an academy at any time. So our counselors will help you change something in the spring if you need to. So it's not something that you definitely have to worry about. You don't have to worry about getting locked out of something um, when you didn't know it ahead of time, okay? So there are multiple chances to apply to an academy. You can join in ninth grade or in 10th grade. You can always change academies. We'd like you to do that before um, the middle of your 11th grade year, because that's when we start working on finding your internships. In 11th grade, we have a long program of um, figuring out where you, what kind of internship you want, building your resume, finding that and helping you support you in that. So we wanna make sure that you kind of have some direction at that point for what kind of internship you want. You can apply to more than one academy and you can drop any of them at any time. Do you need a specific class to get in? Well, sometimes. So I have them listed out if that's the case. So um, with the STEM Academy, you do not need a specific course. We just look at your math and science grades. And then for the Business and Entrepreneurship Academy, you need to take foundations of business and get an 80% or higher to get into that academy. For film and broadcasting, you need to take the broadcasting or art of filmmaking class. For the Flight Academy, you need to take Drone or Flight One. For the Hospitality and Tourism Academy, you need to take principles of hospitality and tourism. And for JNA, it's actually an activity-based requirement. So we're looking for you to participate in either our mock trial or model UN activity during the year. And then there are some GPA, there is a GPA requirement that goes with that. Um, but that's what we're specifically looking at is um, looking to make sure that you're interested and passionate about one of those competitions there. So if you have questions about those specific requirements, I'll show you the websites that can answer a lot of those questions as well. But feel free to email me. My email is at the bottom of the screen there. And hopefully that will take care of a number of questions there. So. Um, I, I wanted to show you the website. So I'm going to, I'm going to shift gears here and go over to the website. And that's pretty much how I'll close until we um, get to everybody's questions. So on um, my screen, I have the main Faith Lutheran website pulled up here. And so when you click under academics, the first thing I'm going to show you is under curriculum. So if you haven't been here before, this is where you can explore all of the classes, especially if you're looking to take conservatory or other endorsement program classes. You know, if you're looking for where to find the, that foundations of business class, I'll show you where that is. So I click on uh, for school level, we click upper school for the high school and you can see all of the different subject areas so in addition to our core areas for our classes, you can see, you know, here's our business and entrepreneurship classes. When you click on them, you'll see the descriptions, the prerequisites, and that to get into them. Then um, you'll note here, so see how it says AP, that's one of those advanced placement classes that you could get um, AP credit for college credit. Um, also, if you click on one like entrepreneurship and leadership down here, you'll notice in the description how it says students may choose to receive college credit. That means that this class is specifically available to get on ground dual credit through Concordia, Nebraska, and that whatever grade you receive in the class, you would receive on a college transcript. And so that's what I was talking about at the beginning of the webinar there. Um, I also want to point out if you're looking for dual credit classes specifically, that you can click on these are the on ground. So this is our listing of on ground dual credit available. And that was um, so at the beginning of the year, you sign up for that. Then down below here, you'll see, let me go to we have online dual credit through Grand Canyon. And so you can click on those classes here. And then I want to show you where the Faith Lutheran online section is. So this specifically, these are located in with our regular courses as well, but here you, is what you're looking for. So the FLO tells you it's an online course. And if you expand, you can see the description and prere prerequisites there. Okay, then up at the top, underneath curriculum, you can see our college counseling information. You can see our Faith Lutheran online website here. If we go over to the academies tab, you can see general academies information and frequently asked questions. Um, one of the most helpful questions I think is would meeting with a counselor be helpful? So there's some answers there with um, 
how our counselors, you could set up a meeting with them to hear more about it, or you could email me and I could help answer some of your questions. Here's the description of the Honors Institute for any of you looking to um, get an advantage and be looking for highly selective colleges, how we support you in that. And then you can click on any one of our academies up at the top here. So if I click on our Film and Broadcasting Academy and you scroll down, you can see the descriptions. You can see the recent updates with what our students are involved in, and you can see the requirements as well as any opportunities. So all of our academies are only available to high school students, but they all do have courses and extracurricular activities that middle school students can take advantage of. So that's kind of your way around the website there. And I think I'm done. I'm sure we have some questions waiting for us, David, but I'm gonna let you take it from here and let me know what we should do. All right, thank you guys so much for the presentation. Uh, Willem, Stella, I had a, a question for you that I received that I wanted to give you guys a chance to ask. We've got a, a decent number of students that have joined us here for the presentation today. Uh, and they kind of want to know what's been your favorite class? What what either elective or core have you taken that you feel like is just truly unique and you really enjoyed uh, taking uh, either this year or in a previous year? I can start and then if you want to go or if you want to. OK, um, well, I mentioned two of of. Um, two really important classes to me. And this year I'm really enjoying AP Biology. This is a class that that is double blocked, meaning that I uh, attend it every single day. And I have really found a, a much deeper interest in biology through um, a great teacher and some really interesting lab work. Um, another class that I already mentioned was the Boundary Waters Ecology Trip. Um, so this is a class where you are in the classroom for a portion of it during the summer studying the ecology of the Boundary Waters area in Minnesota. And then the class concludes with a trip to the Minnesota Boundary Waters. So that includes camping, canoeing, learning about the ecology. And um, there's also a lot of team building and physical exertion required. So that was a class that, that really stood out to me as a hands-on experiential learning uh, experience. Go ahead, Stella, sorry. That's a really good question. For me, I love all the classes that Faith offers because all of them are all unique in their own ways and all the teachers have uh, unique ways of teaching. But if I had to pick, I might pick the uh, hospitality class because we get hands-on experiences and fun assignments. For example, uh, last week we did a How Accessible Was Faith. So our teacher brought in a wheelchair and we went around Faith to see what, what was good or what was bad, what are things to improve on or anything like that to help us bring that into the business world. And I also love, honestly, all of our classes from band to foundations of business, everything has their own unique ways. Awesome, thank you guys. Um, Anna, I believe you had a couple of questions directed towards the FLOW program. Um, did you want to uh, address those? I believe there's a couple about um, whether classes should be taken back to back um, or whether they could be spread out or could you do uh, two classes over the summer? You might've answered those um, via chat, but I thought they might be good for everybody else to take a look at as well. I did answer those on chat. Um, for the summer, we only offer, instead of our 15-week semester that we have during the school year, we have a condensed eight-week format because of the time frame that we, um, you know, the amount of time that we have available, and we want kids to have some chance to vacation. Um, so you really only have time to get one semester in. I, um, I had a parent ask the other day if they could, their student could take more than one class over the summer, yes, but again, with that eight week time crunch, it's a lot of work. Um, and if your kid is already taking AP classes, I know Willem and Stella can, can um, definitely speak to the amount of summer work that there is for those, for a lot of those as well. Um, so you don't, you don't wanna take a ton. Um, David, you said there was another? I think that covered it. 
Okay. Yes, thank you. Um, the uh, question in the, the Q&A that I think would be valuable for everybody, um, how to go about auditioning for the conservatory. Uh, our current students can find information depending on their discipline or area of interest around the school. Uh, I believe audition times are available now for students to select. Uh, the auditions themselves uh, start in January and carry on into February, depending on the, uh, the area uh, specifically. For uh, students that are prospective students, just go ahead and email admissions. Uh, we've got several different uh, email addresses. You can email me directly, david.dwyer at FLHS email. I'd be happy to get that contact information to you directly, or you can send it into our general admissions line. Uh, I do plan on sending out a, a mass email to all of our families who might be interested in auditioning as we get uh, deeper into December. So you can be on the lookout for that. But if you'd like to be proactive, go ahead and email me separately. I'd be happy to connect you in to make sure you get the correct information. All right, let's see. If you have any outstanding questions, please feel free to go ahead and submit those. We're dwindling now. Emily, I'm going to ask if you know this one, um, but I'm not sure if, if you do. It's the percentage of 2022 graduating students. Um, and the reason why I don't know if you have this, I don't have this information as we, we generally look a couple of years back and not necessarily for the most recent year. Um, and so that's information that we can definitely gather and are working on compiling. Uh, Emily, do you have a little bit more of an analysis as far as just graduation rate? Where are our students going to college then uh, once they uh, finish up their time at Faith Lutheran? Uh, and then the, uh, the top 25, and I know that that's a, an ever-changing number as well. Uh, talk about that a little bit. So our students, I do have a list compiled of where our students actually um, go to college, but I don't have a list of everywhere they get accepted to. I know that they published that um, at at graduation, they talk about the number of schools that the students get accepted to, um, but I don't actually know the numbers off the top of my head, but our, our students are going to amazing schools, and um, yeah, no, I'm sorry, I don't have the, the answer, but I would be happy to, I would be happy to get Mr. Chillman on it, because he would be able to give her more information, so if you can save the information or somehow, I will have him reply. All right, going through, seeing if I've got any other uh, unanswered questions here. Um, oh, this would be a good one. Uh, the internship process, are the students on their own to find their own internship? Do we provide assistance in that process? Can you cover the internships a little bit more? Absolutely. So at the beginning of the year, I asked the student, it's actually really interesting because, you know, students are doing an academy, but like Willem said, um, it's really important that students understand that this is not locking you into a lifelong career choice just by choosing an academy, that this is really just a way of exploring a passion and you're able to drop it at any point. But um, if you do join an academy and you need to complete an internship, um, we have a lot of support. So going from a very general academy field down to a very specific internship takes um, a little bit of time and conversation with the students. So we use a program called View Science to help the students narrow down some fields they're interested in, whether it's in the field of their academy or not, just to get a, a better idea of what they're looking for. Then we, um, then we build resumes. And so on the resume, we include the different areas that the students are interested in and, of course, all of the things that go into resumes. Then I, um, we actually have a meeting to help them build the resume. And then coming up in a couple of weeks, actually, I'm working with our Academy Juniors, and I invite the parents to join this meeting by Zoom. But what I do is we go through the internship proposal form. And so the internship proposal is then a specific idea of what the students are interested in. So it could be that the student first wants to reach out to a personal connection that has a career or opportunity in an area of interest. Or it could be, I keep a list of where all of our students have interned and all of our internship partners. And so the students, I share that with the students and they're able to look down that list. And then they tell me um, if, they have, if they have a specific personal connection or if they're most interested in 
one of our school connections. And then that's what we go for first. So we, we take kind of their first choice, second choice, third choice, fourth choice, then we go down them. And so we, um, if it's a connection through school, then I will reach out to them and set up that internship um, to make sure and send them the resume and kind of bridge that gap for the student if it's not somebody they're familiar with. And so it happens both ways. Some of our students um, have internships that, you know, for, through some sort of connection that they have. And then some of our students do it through school connections. And so we fill out the, the internship proposal form. And then from there, we have a meeting on, you know, professional courtesy and, and how we do mock interviews with the students to help them um, because a number of our students have to do interviews um, just for their internships to get them. And so we go through that process with them as well because we're asking them to do some very adult things to get this internship. So we really try to walk them through that and help them understand that resume, application, interview process. And we do all of that at school um, during our advice advisory time. So, so that's how we accomplish all of those things. Awesome. Thank you so much for that answer, Emily. Um, go ahead, guys. If you have any last questions for Willem and Stella, please submit those now. If not, after I answer this next question, I'm going to go ahead and dismiss them because they have some uh, busy homework load, I'm sure, uh, before we get ready for the holiday break as we wrap up our Q&A here in the next three to five minutes as well. Um, but one of the questions that we had was just overall size uh, as far as the school is concerned. Here at Faith Lutheran, uh, we serve grades 6 through 12 here all on one campus. We've got over 50 acres um, with which we are continuously trying to make sure that we are upgrading uh, and providing additional services and resources to our students. Uh, currently, we serve just over 2,000 total students uh, with roughly 800 students in the middle school and just over 1,200 students in the high school itself. Our freshman and sophomore classes are our largest classes with roughly 330 students each. Uh, we do not actively recruit upperclassmen. Um, we want our students that are earning our degree, uh, walking away with our, our Faith Lutheran diploma to have completed a majority of their time here on campus. Uh, and so naturally some students do leave or have to move away with the, uh, the transients that we have here in Vegas. Um, but we do anticipate that continuing and will be over 1200 again uh, next year with another large freshman class uh, and our sophomore and freshman classes continuing on. So just over 2000 total and just over 1200 here in the high school alone uh, at Faith Lutheran. All right, well, I'm so it doesn't look like I've got any more questions for you. So thank you guys so much for being all stars for taking time out of your, your Thursday night to be here with us. You can go ahead and shut down your cameras and sign off. We appreciate it. Uh, Emily, Anna, and Kat, I'll see if we've got any other questions here that we need to wrap up with. Um, so that way we can be tight with everybody's time and get them out of here. So thank you guys. Uh, it looks like I, I have one last question in there that I don't quite know what it's referencing. Do you have the numbers from last year? If that's your question, please go ahead and uh, clarify that. If not, I don't want to appear that we are ignoring a numbers question. I love numbers, so I have no problem talking about that and would happily answer. And with that, I want to go ahead, Emily, Anna, Kat, again, thank you guys all so much for taking time out of your days. Thank you for providing this forum so that we could dive a little bit deeper. We have so many different options, so many different courses. Um, when families come and tour with me, I don't even really get to dive into all of that. So that being said, I would encourage everybody here who uh, does not currently attend, or even if you do currently attend and you're really doing your due diligence on high school, schedule a, fam a campus tour with us. Um, take some time out of your day. Come uh, chat with me in the admissions office. Let me show you around. Let me show you some of the great classrooms we have and, and really talk about that. And make sure you feel comfortable with the high school decisions that you are looking to make for your students. Let me go ahead and see if we've got any more in there. Some thank yous, some thank yous. All right. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap us up here. Please email me if you have a question specifically that we did not get a chance to answer, david.dwyer at flhsemail.org. If I do not know the answer specifically, I will make sure to connect you with the right people so they can answer your questions. The ladies that we have here, the gentlemen on staff, they are never shy. They never are uh, afraid of getting a chance to engage with you all directly. So we really appreciate your opportunities to do so. 
come take a look for yourself. Uh, come on a tour, come email us, call us, whatever you need to do to make sure you feel good uh, about Faith Lutheran High School as a destination for you and your families. Thank you all. Have a great night.